the, the next speaker is from the United Arab Air Emirate University, and uh, her name is uh, Marine Javid, and her talk is Alloying Engineering into the Radelson Popper Monolayer Perovskites for Photovoltaics Application. Welcome. Hi, good morning. I'm Mehreen Javed from United Arab Emirates University, and I'm a PhD student uh, from College of Science Physics Department. My PhD work is about computational study of proviscides, and uh, here a partial work of my that project is uh, I'm presenting here. It's about LI engineering in two-dimensional Radisson Popper monolayer proviscides. So let's start. The outline of my presentation, I will discuss the global energy demand, that the best finest solution in terms of the solar perspective, in terms of the proviscite solar cell. Uh, I will discuss about uh, the idea I have implemented in terms of the crystallographic defects and dopants. And uh, I will show a few of my uh, results and I will discuss them. And finally, I will conclude my talk. Uh, uh, as we know that the energy is the main fuel for the life, so uh, in terms of the energy, we have two broadly separated forms of the energy. Uh, the one is renewable and non-renewable, um, uh, one producing a lot of carbon footprint on the environment. So ultimately, a very opposite effect on the environment both are producing. Uh, so there is direct need that we should shift our energy demands towards these renewable energy resources and uh, CSG uh, uh, Goals, that is the sustainability, sustainability development goals that we have. Uh, so clean energy is one of the uh, most important one that affects the other directly or indirectly. If we see that, uh, so we, uh, we can see that uh, in the case of the energy production, the solar energy is the biggest source that can actually satisfy this energy demand because uh, every year about 23,000 terawatt energy that hits from sun to the earth and out of which only 16 terawatt is actually being used. So big amount of the energy is available that we can actually use. But the question arises that how it is possible, that like what challenges we are facing uh, currently in terms of the cost, efficiency, and the stability. So there are a lot of room and there are plenty of questions that we need to answer actually. Uh, so whenever we uh, try to make a, like a conversion of sunlight that is in uh, nothing but the photons uh, in terms of the electricity. So uh, what device come into mind is the solar cell. So uh, the most important layer in the solar cell is the actually absorber where all the photochemical activity actually take place. And uh, keeping this absorber in mind, we have this NREL chart uh, that shows the progress of different solar cell on the time scale. Uh, we see in the bluish and purple, the silicon-based solar cell that are in market uh, commercially, but they are very expensive that we can't see solar to uh, like uh, common that way we are using the other modes of the electricity production. And uh, if we see uh, the proviscite-based solar cells specifically, so in, uh, we can see avalanche progress in the span of last 13 years. Uh, starting from 3.8% to 32.5%. And this is hopes are high that this progress uh, is uh, will keep on going because um, the way the proviscite solar cell have replaced the silicon is like uh, very thought provoking. And, um, but still there are a few challenges uh, that we need to actually overcome to make the proviscite solar cell in commercial world. Uh, the one is the lead uh, because we know lead is toxic. Uh, so uh, the other thing, like to replace the lead, uh, we can do, uh, we can replace it with the neighboring element like tin and germanium on the product table. And another challenge we in face is in terms of the efficiency. This is the way we can uh, replace it using the defect engineering because whenever uh, an element is replaced with the neighboring uh, or any other element, new features get produced, new uh, structure get produced, and new uh, electronic properties we get. Uh, another challenge we face in terms of the stability and uh, this we can overcome by using the two-dimensional base proviscides because they have some organic layer that cover the chemically active inorganic layer. Uh, so 
keeping an ensemble of these uh, two challenges like um, efficiency and stability by using the tandem solar cell that are uh, like a layer of different uh, pro type of the proviscus, we can actually solve all of these challenges. Uh, so um, uh, the strategical scheming that I have adopted, I have used the crystallographic defects. So the, with the idea that defects are not always bad. Uh, so uh, because we know in uh, crystallographic world, whenever we replace an atom with the new one, so this is called defect because it has distorted the crystal structure. Uh, so I have replaced all the element of proviscide like A, B, and X. I have introduced the so we can see that is another form of the defects. I have introduced the strain in terms of the com uh, compression and tensile strain. Um, these are a few of my work. Uh, that are published in two journals. But uh, currently, I will focus only on um, B and X base, uh, like how they affect the electronic properties when we uh, use the alloying of B and X element in the proviscus. Uh, so this is uh, 16 structures, depending upon the different uh, concentration of the lead uh, I have studied. Uh, so this is my structure. Here we can see uh, that um, the green and the pink are the uh, organic inorganic layer, while on the top and the bottom of these layer are the organic layer that are we call the spacer cation. These are hydrophobic, water repellent, or moisture uh, resistant, we can say, because they are actually protecting it against stability, like uh, they are providing the stability against the water molecule. Uh, I have studied the 16 possible permutation where uh, germanium, I have replaced the lead with the germanium in uh, four type of the concentration, like 25, 50, 70, five and hundred percent and uh, for the 50 percent there are uh, six permutations are studied the permutations are basically where the dopant is actually replacing at what is the location of uh, uh, that dopant would be in that crystal structure so all the possible uh, possibilities I have studied um, so this is the uh, and comparative view of uh, band gap for all these uh, permutations. We can see uh, when the lead was replaced with the germanium, so a substantial uh, replacement resulted in a gradual uh, decrease in the band gap. And uh, we can see uh, in the case of the methyl ammonium, the band gap was not this much lower, but when the larger spacer cation, that is a phenylethyl ammonium was used, the band gap was, uh, uh, um, furthermore, it was reduced. And uh, this difference can actually be observed from the next energy level diagram, where we can see um, that the uh, actual band edges, like valence band and conduction band, they are slightly shifted upward. And uh, the lower uh, two series, I will explain next, like these are the stoke effect I have studied. And in this case, the band gap is further reduced. The reason for is that the spin orbit coupling has actually splitted the conduction band uh, across the gamma point. And uh, we can clearly see the further reduction in the band gap. And this soak effect is prominently pronounced in the lead case uh, because lead is heavy element and uh, it is more uh, uh, like active towards this spin orbit coupling as compared to germanium where um, a, a comparatively less uh, splitting at the conduction band is observed. Um, the next is I have studied the, the uh, density of state plot, which clearly shows uh, that all of these uh, structures are defect tolerant, mean um, they are still semiconductor with a little band gap. With the germanium, although the band gap is reduced, and uh, but still uh, there is no deep states are um, occurring inside the band gap. And further, we can see uh, the anionic dominance at the valence band and cationic dominance at the conduction band. Uh, further, these are the few features uh, that I have got. Um, these structures are defect tolerant, quantum confinement is observed, dialectic confinement is there. So ultimately, uh, by, uh, uh, by studying the crystal orbital Hamiltonian population analysis, we have got the anti-bonding valence band and conduction band. And um, finally, uh, by having different range of uh, band gap, we can see that uh, when we will design a tandem solar cell with these different band gap oriented structures uh, so we can um, see a pronounced uh, efficiency. Uh, 
Uh, further, uh, this is the final concluding diagram that shows uh, the effect of doping different um, elements. Like if we replace the lead with the tin or germanium, the band gap is reduced. Um, uh, if we replace the methyl ammonium fin uh, with phenyl ethyl ammonium, the band gap is little reduced because this is the part that don't actually mm, affect the chemical activity, but it affects the size and the shape. And if we replace the X part with the smaller, like iodine with the bromine and the chlorine, the band gap show an increase. Uh, finally, I have also performed a molecular dynamic calculation where I introduced the water molecule to, uh, to see actually the stability, uh, like how it's stable towards the environment, toward the water action. Uh, so we can see the larger spacer cation on the first one is actually protecting uh, the chemically active octahedral cage uh, from the water attack. Uh, so stability is achieved. So finally, achieving all the goals of reducing the lead toxicity, improving the efficiency and stability, we can uh, promise a new uh, solar world based on the proviscite solar cell. So this is only possible by shaking the hand of the technology with the green energy, and uh, we can uh, ensure a promising green future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have... We have time for one question. Yeah, please, the microphone as usual. Maybe two questions. Just uh, stability and efficiency, especially yeah. efficiency. We didn't see anything. Did you check versus the, uh, the, the, the alloying versus X? Did, did you check the efficiency, whether you are achieving good efficiency using yeah. this alloying or no? Yeah, this is the one step ahead towards my work. This is we uh, we can do, like we have to simulate the whole solar cell, uh, like where we actually check the IV plot we will make and uh, we will calculate the efficiency. Uh, so yeah, this we can actually do. And um, uh, not only uh, the concentration actually matters, uh, but also the stacking, um, like stacking order of the layers, like what the whole transporting layer and electron transporting layer we are using in combination with these absorber layer. So this is another part of the physics, and uh, like the things are way broader, um, not uh, relying only this absorber and study, be because the band gap is although the key parameter in defining the photovoltaic performance of any material, but still this is not the last thing. Uh, the, uh, like um, we can once we design a proper solar cell, we can actually see um, uh, like how it will perform. Actually, like um, uh, commercially we can uh, sorry uh, computationally we can check, and then finally experimentally we can check. Yeah. Thank you very much. Quick question, Tony. Okay. Thank you very much. It's a very yeah. nice talk. Thank you. How, how did you deal with the disorder in your calculations with the solid solutions? Uh, yeah, computationally we have advantage. Like experimentally, we uh, we go the things, the things go on. Like we cannot handle them. Although there are some uh, like environmental conditions, we make them in the way that we can handle uh, where the defects will be introduced by keeping the concentration in mind. But still, we are not sure where the atom will go and the sit on actually. Uh, but in computationally, the things are in our hand. We can actually locate an atom. We can replace that. So yeah, this is uh, the advantage of of competition we actually have in that sense. So did you use a supercell or something like y that? Yeah, exactly. I did because uh, the doping would be uh, not of use if I will not use a supercell. Yeah. I like your confidence with respect to computation, but le uh, let's give a round of applause. Thank you.